Hello. Um, good afternoon. So I'm from Aston University. So I'm a research fellow at Aston University, but also um, the lab manager at the Dubrovsky lab in the Rotopedic Hospital. And uh, before I start, to start talking about my work, I have to say that um, this conference has been very special for me because uh, I've always been very passionate about research and I've made very big life decisions uh, because of this being the most important one, moving, from, moving away from my home country, Brazil, um, and away from my family and friends to the UK three years ago because I thought that uh, research gives me an opportunity to make a real contribution to humanity in general. But the truth is that we have to spend a lot of time in the lab performing experiments and in the office writing papers and grant proposals and emails all the time. Um, so being here today and having this opportunity to actually see the patients in person and connecting to your stories um, has helped me to, to realize that I've made the right choice. So, so thank you very much for this. So my research is on the development of cancer-killing uh, bone grafts for osteosarcoma. And the osteosarcoma is the most common primary bone, bone malignancy. Its initial treatment is with chemotherapy followed by ablation surgery and further adjuvant immunotherapy. As for the surgery, the limb-sparing limb surgery with resection of wide margins is the current paradigm. And in this procedure, the tumor is excised, but also some of the, the healthy tissue around, uh, that surrounds it to try to make sure that we remove as many cancer cells as possible to prevent the cancer to return. And this reconstruction, or for this reconstruction, uh, usually the, it, it requires the use of some bone substitutes or bone grafts. These bone grafts can be either uh, organic or synthetic. So this, an ideal synthetic bone graft targeted toward osteosarcoma therapy should stimulate bone formation to repair that bone defect that was created during the ablation surgery. But also, it should be able to eradicate any residual tumor not excised in the ablation surgery, exactly to, to, to prevent the cancer to return, right? And of course, it needs to be biocompatible. And this is the goal of my research, to produce this material with dual effect, right? Regenerate bone and kill cancer cells to prevent cancer return. As for the regeneration, bone regeneration, we chose bioactive glasses because when it comes to bone regeneration, the bioactive glasses really stand out. The first composition was developed in the 1970s, and it was called the Bioglass 45S5. And this type of material has a special property. So if you take this material as a powder, or in this form, for example, and you pop it into any liquid, like water or blood, it, it starts to exchange ions with water, and it spontaneously forms a layer of a mineral called the hydroxyapatite upon the surface of the material. So as you can see in this high magnification image, before and after immersion in a liquid, it formed this layer of this mineral hydroxyapatite. And hydroxyapatite is just the same mineral that we have in our bones. So what happens is the material, the hydroxyapatite created on the material can integrate very well with the hydroxyapatite in our bones, right? It gives a lot of stability to the implant. Also, not just to the bone, but also for, uh, to the soft tissue. But the material also releases some ions that can act upon bone cells, like calcium and silicon, can stimulate 
this, this cells to produce more bone and, and help the bone regen, uh, regeneration. And of course, this material is biocompatible. So bioglass was approved, uh, FDA approved decades ago, and it's been used in more than one million patients for different applications in dentistry and orthopedics, uh, not just for humans, but also for, for um, animals. And so we had this biomaterial that we could use to regenerate bone, and we thought, okay, how can we tweak the composition of these bioactive glasses and kind of squeezing something that could be delivered locally and kill cancer cells to prevent the cancer to return? So we went to the periodic table and tried to identify anything that could kill cancer. And then we, in the end of, in the end of this investigation, we chose gallium. And we chose gallium because this metallic iron is already being used for the treatment of all the cancers. The first gallium compounds to enter medical application, uh, they did so because uh, when, they, when it was discovered that radioactive gallium, when, when injected in tumor-bearing patients, could actually localize the tumors and concentrate there somehow. And for this reason, it was initially used for diagnosis purposes. But then, of course, this observation prompted the logical question as to whether non-radioactive gallium compounds could also concentrate in tumors and inhibit their growth. And in fact, preclinical and human studies confirmed the antineoplastic activity of gallium nitrate, one of such compositions, which was FDA approved as uh, gunite. And this um, compound, this drug now, was used, um, has been used for the past decade for the treatment of bladder cancer and prostate cancer, and some other types of cancer as well. So we did that, so we combined the bioactive glasses, FDA approved, with gallium to form these gallium-doped bioactive glasses for the treatment of bone cancer. So I'm gonna show you now like the state of the art, demonstrating just some of our main findings. In fact, um, I'll be talking about this particular publication, which, has, which is our most um, actual, like last two weeks, I think two weeks ago it was published. So it's fresh data in, in a high impact journal. But also, I'm bringing this because it kind of summarizes the whole research, like the whole process of fabrication, characterization of these biomaterials, and also testing in vitro and in vivo. So first of all, what we do is basically mix some powders, these precursors, we call it, like carbonates and oxides in these platinum uh, crucibles. Then we heat up this mixture in these high temperature furnaces to about 400,000. Uh, 400, um, 1400 degrees, and then it melts, right? When it melts, we, we quench this molten glass into graphite modes, and it cools, down, cools, it cools down really quickly and forms a glass, like a window glass, right? But with uh, special properties, I would say. So we grind these glasses into powder, so with this powder, with this powder, we use the powder for characterization experiments and also for some of the other in vitro and in vivo experiments. But we, what we do for the in vitro experiments is we supplement this special liquid called cell culture medium with our glass. A cell culture medium is like a special liquid that can actually sustain your cells outside your body. So I can extract your cells put in the cell coach medium, and they will actually, surprisingly, grow outside your body, right? So what we do is we supplement this cell coach medium with our glass in powder form by mixing it for 24 hours. Then we filter sterilize this material to remove the particles. So we end up with just uh, the cell coach medium conditioned with the ions that came from the dissolution of these glasses. And we try to kill cancer cells with this. So these are some of the results. First, we proved that even though we introduced gallium into the structure of the bioactive glass, it was still 
a bioactive glass. It could form hydroxyapatite. So if you see these images here, this is the normal, the original composition, and this one is the one containing gallium. So you can see that it also formed hydroxyapatite. We also had to show, and we did, we proved that the material can release gallium in a sustained way throughout some days, which proves that it can serve as a, as a deli localized delivery system for this particular ion in here. So in this panel here, what you see is, um, are some micrographs of cells marked with uh, an assay called live dead assay. So in green, you see live cells, and the dead cells usually appear in, in red or just absent because they were washed away during the, the procedure. So you see two, two, different of, two different types of cells, the cancer cells in the bottom row and normal cells in the top row. So if you see the, the, the osteosarcoma cells, more, spe uh, more specifically, the cells through cell line, when they're treated with the control medium, they are happy, happy and healthy. <laughs> when they're treated with the original composition with zero, uh, of, of bioglass, with 0% gallium, you see they, they look very similar. But here you see that these cells are actually sensitive to gallium, and we, we got like 50% killing in just three days of treatment, just as a proof of concept. And of course, we had to prove that it doesn't kill the normal cells. And this is what we can see in the top row, the normal bone cells. Then we had to show that we can actually implant this material into a living animal, and it's not going to have any systemic toxicity, right? And local toxicity as well. And also that the material can integrate well with bone, because now we have something different in the composition of the glass, so maybe it's not, it doesn't integrate as well. So I, for this, I used this uh, critical-sized calvario defect experimental model. So in this, in this experiment, I create a defect on the calvario bone of, of rats, and we treat this defect with pressed powder or pellets of both biomaterials, and we compare with the control group just with the empty defect. And what we can see is that uh, even though we have gallium in our composition, it's still bioactive. It forms those strong bridges that I talked about earlier with bone. And also it showed no sign of local toxicity. It wasn't rejected you know, or whatever. But then, like I said, we needed to prove it's not toxic systemically. So we chose two highly metabolic organs, the kidneys and the liver, to study. So what we're seeing here is photograph, photographs of this, um, the, the, the kidneys from the two treatment groups and the control groups, and also the micrographs. So you see that microsco macroscopically and microscopically, there's no sign of toxicity because both groups, uh, rats from both groups, they look like the control group with no treatment at all. The same for the livers, micro macroscopically and microscopically, it was fine after eight weeks of treatment, right? Um, the other thing we did was studying the blood serum of the rats to look for biochemical markers of hepatic and renal damage. And again, we couldn't find any difference between the concentration of, from, from both treatment groups and the control group. So altogether, this, this result allowed us to come up with a general theory of how our materials could could be this ide ideal synthetic bone graft for osteosarcoma that um, we, we, are, we, are, we are in need, to be honest. Our material is able to release some ions, some active ions like gallium, calcium, silicon, that can form hydroxyapatite and support bone repair in vivo whilst being and at the same time, selectively killing osteosarcoma cells with no sign of local or systemic toxicity. Some of the current investigations that are going on right now in our lab is an in-depth in -depth investigation of the sensitivity of several cell lines of osteosarcoma to gallium. 
our goal is to determine how many ions of gallium are necessary to kill one cell. Because we truly believe this information will be critical for us to develop more effective and, uh, biomaterials. Another investigation is of the sensitivity of bone metastasis to gallium doped glasses. For that, we are using cell lines, but also biopsies that we, we will get from patients in the Royal Orthopedic Hospital where I happen to work. So I'd like to finish this presentation by saying thank you to Aston University, which is my, my employer, and also to the Bone Cancer Research Trust for financing part of the, the, this, the, the experiments that we are performing now, and to the Dubrovsky Legacy via the Royal Topedic Hospital Charitable Fund, which is also uh, funding part of my research. And thank you for your attention and patience. <laughs>